What's up, dudes? Making this Conan character. Here, I got to go to my Google Drive because my handwriting's pretty bad, so I'm just going to type everything in here. Um, okay, so the first thing you have to do, this is the book Conan, Robert Howard's Conan, Adventures in an Age Undreamed of by Mo Defus. It's a really, I probably pronounced the company's name wrong. They do the Star Trek game. It's a D20 game. Um, the book is beautiful. It's really great. If you're a fan of the property, if you're a Conan fan, if you like the old books, if you read the old books, if you like the new Jason Aaron comic, uh, I would advise picking this up. This book is really beautiful. The artwork is fantastic. Um, the character creation can be... It's a bit daunting. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Like, look at that. Look at that artwork. Look at that. Really? That's killer. Double, that's a double page spread. It's beautiful. Uh, the character creation can be a bit daunting. It's looking at the book right now. Um, it's about 89 pages of material on making your character and the first thing they tell you to do is to grab yourself 2d20 roll your 2d20 because they give you steps so the first step when you're making your character is they want you to figure out where you're from your homeland which is very important in the conan lore if you read any conan they're always talking about i mean conan's the chimerian um you've got the people from all over the place the the black kingdoms the pond the you know the kush all these people so the first thing you do is you take 2d20 and you roll your 2d20 and whatever number that is that's your homeland okay so i rolled a 25 so my people so my character would be from zingara all right and then i have to go to page 228 to read about the zingara which is kind of cool because not everybody's going to really know you know the different regions and the different races and the different lands in the Conan book. So my character would be from Zingara because I rolled my 2d20 and I rolled a 25. And it says Zingara, a land on the brink of insurrection. Zingara is the dark mirror of Argos, where Argos usually keeps its nobles from open war. Zingara rapidly slides towards all-out conflict. Provinces and princes ally, betray, and intermarry in attempts to stave off full decline, yet the hot-blooded people of Zingara see skirmishes flare constantly. Uh, massive conflagration lies not far ahead. While many scholars classify Zingara as a uh, hyper 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 hyperbolean kingdom, the people have their roots in the Zing Valley. Um, which, from which the land takes its name, a race older uh, who came down from the north. So that, that would be my people. I am, I am Zingara. I'm from Zingara, so that's my land, okay? And then you have to pick your homeland talents. Once your homeland is determined, randomly or by choice, the player should write down the associated homeland talents and language. Your character will have a variety of talents learned from various phases of character creation and earned with experience through gameplay. So since I am from Zingara, I am a sea raider, which is pretty rad, and I speak Zingarian, of course. Now on the, on the next page right here, they have all the different, I guess, um, I guess talents for your character. So it says my, my talent being from uh, Zingara Sea Raider is the difficulty of all sailing tests made in your homeland's waters are reduced by one. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this can reduce tests to a difficulty of a sample. Additionally, the difficulties of any athletic tests relating to swimming are similarly re reduced. So obviously my dude is a water guy. So that's pretty neato. And then the next thing you want to do, so let me write that down on my little piece of paper. So over here, I got my drive, my untitled document. So my talent is a sea raider. 
which is kind of cool because I was thinking about making a pirate anyway. So that's kind of badass. And this is just random. You can you can go through and pick the stuff yourself, but I'm just rolling the dice to see what I get to make it kind of more fun. So like I said, I rolled a 25. I got Zingara. And one of my talents is a sea raider. And I read what the being a sea raider entails. So the next thing you have to do is you do your attributes, okay? This is where it gets a little confusing, but not too much more. It says step two attributes. Each character in Conan is defined by seven attributes. These attributes uh, embody a character's uh, physical and mental abilities and limitations. They are agility, awareness, brawn, coordination, intelligence, personality, and willpower. So there's a little bit of a difference from your regular D&D Pathfinder game. They add coordination, I guess, which would just be dexterity, uh, personality, which is just charisma, and willpower. So it's kind of worded different but same. You get seven attributes here. I think you get seven attributes in all the other games. Each attribute has a rating that determines its measure. Higher attribute numbers reflect greatly in the abilities for humans. Most attributes range from six to 12 with eight representing an average. It's possible for human attribute ratings to be below six to ref reflect a particularly inept, weak, or poor attributes. Additionally, um, humanity has descended from prior heights of development, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So agility is the measure of your physical and manual dexterity. Awareness represents perception and sense acuity across five key senses, vision, hearing, feeling, taste, and smell. Brawn, of course, might endurance, toughness. Coordination is hand-eye coordination. Intelligence, measure of your wit and intellect, which is pretty simple. Personality, charisma, ease of social interaction, ability to be charming or deceptive, and willpower is your force of will and mental resolve. So there you go. So all characters start with a seven. All right. So everybody starts at seven. So all those agility, awareness, brawn, coordination, intelligence, personality, willpower, it's all a seven. Okay. That's what we're looking at right now in Conan Adventures in an age undreamed of. So we start out at seven. Uh, with the game master's permission, the players can voluntarily reduce one or two attributes to six and raise another to eight, but I'm not really interested in doing that. Once the decision is made, the designated attribute aspects from the following table are applied to the character's attributes. Players should roll twice on this table. So what they want you to do is, after determining the character's two attribute aspects, the character gains two mandatory and one optional uh, attributes. The player selects the best and worst. The best attribute is increased by three. The worst is increased by one. All other mandatory attributes increase by two. So there you go. So you just roll your d20 and you kind of figure out what it is. So let's see. Let's see, I roll my d20. And I get a nine. So with my nine, I get wise and friendly. Those are my attribute aspects. Along with that comes intelligence, personality, coordination, and brawn. Huh. All right, that's not bad. So with my nine, I can get, as I said, wise and friendly, intelligence, personality, coordination, and brawn. So you have your mandatory attributes, and my mandatory with a nine is intelligence. My best and worst, one mandatory attribute is the best and another is the worst. The best gains a three and the minus gains a one. So I can choose intelligence to be a three and personality to be my one. And then the optional ones can go up by two. So that's not bad. So with wise and friendly, mandatories are intelligence and personality. So one of those I can choose to be three. So maybe I'll do my bonus for intelligence. No, you know what? Maybe I'll do personality for three and intelligence for one. And then I get plus two to the other ones. So with that... I am looking at, where's my pencil? 
Let me get my little sheet of paper here. So what did I say? I said I wanted my mm, a smart barbarian. I'm not a barbarian. I am actually a seafarer. I'm a, I'm a sea raider. You missed before, Rick. I rolled a 25. And for this, you do your homeland talents and language. And they have a whole chart there where you roll. And I rolled a 25. So I am a Zingara. And my, ta my talent is sea raider. So I'm actually a sea raider. That's my thing right now. And then with my with my nine that I rolled on my attribute chart because they give you uh, one, well, you know, every two you get one, a charming barbarian, perhaps you never know. So wise and friendly is mine because I rolled a nine. I could have got strong and result, uh, acute and aware, fast and fit, eagle-eyed, but I rolled a nine, so I got wise and friendly. So I have intelligence and personality are my mandatory. And with your mandatory, one is a three, one is a plus one. So I will choose intelligence to be my one, of course, plus one, and personality to be my three. And then my, man, my optional attributes, I can do uh, one attribute, <clears throat> Other mandatory attributes are increased by two. Um, one attribute is picked from the two options for each role. So I get coordination and brawn. So I guess those get a plus one. So there you go. So coordination plus one and brawn plus one. And with everything starting at seven, I'm looking at an intelligence of eight, a personality of 10, a coordination of eight, and, um, and my brawn at eight. So there you go. So I think I've got the attributes worked out. If not, I'll have to go back and check this out. Like I said, some of this stuff, I've never done this before. So some of it's worded a bit weird. Like I said, manage four attributes are determined as mandatory. Uh, if the same result is rolled and pick the two attributes that are mandatory. So yeah, so there you go. So I roll this twice? Hmm, I don't know. I guess I should have read this a little more before I just started doing it. But whatevs, it's part of the fun. Uh, yep, so you got your two uh, best and worst. One mandatory attribute is the best, and then one is the worst. So the best gains three, and your worst gains one. Other mandatory attributes are increased by two. If any of these attributes are the same, the bonuses are stacked. Oh, stacked. Uh, optional attributes. One attribute is picked from the two options offered at each roll. So I guess I do roll this twice. It doesn't say that. All right. So I guess I have to roll this twice. So let's roll a d20 again. See what happens. I hope you guys aren't too. Uh, uh, I hope these guys aren't too powered, overpowered. When I was playing the Pathfinder play test, making a character, I noticed they could be too overpowered. So let's see what I get here. I got a ten. So they're the same. Um, the result, if the result is rolled out or picked, only two attributes are the same. Hmm. Let's see here. So I want to roll something else. Three. There you go. So I get acute and aware. So there you go. So I get awareness, intelligence, agility, and coordination as well. So there you go. Okay. So four attributes are determined as mandatory. If the same result is rolled or picked, then only two attributes are mandatory. So I get to roll twice. Okay, so I did roll, so I got acute and aware. And that entails awareness, intelligence, agility, and coordination. The mandatory ones are awareness and intelligence. Hmm, interesting. Cool, okay. The best attributes one, other mandatories are a two, okay. Um, we're learning as we go. So you roll twice. Um, so with that, I think I will still stick with personality as a three and then intelligence as a one. And then my other two get twos. So awareness and intelligence. Awareness gets a two. And then... Intelligence would be my negative. So there you go. 
cool. I am Sinbad. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. So, yeah, so, so far, so good. Um, I didn't know I had to roll two dice. That got a little complicated. Uh, I'm going to add up these numbers a little bit later, try to figure everything out. And then the next thing you have to do is your cast. Cast is a social class from which the character was born and has emerged. Generally, this will have been with the character's class since birth, uh, though occasionally nobles are enslaved and barbarians become kings and queens. Cast get you casts grant you two talents so that's pretty cool um, based on your character's homeland you may choose or ignore the dice roll so you can roll some dice to see what you get so so far i've been rolling dice out for all this stuff so i guess we can roll some more dice it says casts will be described skills will be described in three each the skills gained are plus one skills expertise and plus one skill focus for the designated skills okay all right all right and you get a social standing too which is kind of interesting um cast its determined social standing based on your character's homeland in step one you may choose to ignore the dice rolls or just pick something else but i'm just gonna roll it because that's what we've been doing so far so let's see what this means let's see here Roll always. That's a good way to do it because you can always kind of figure out what you're going to be, always kind of figure out what you're going to do. But sometimes it's just fun to leave it to chance. So you can just roll it. And don't forget Metal Shark Bro live on Kickstarter right now. Go to MetalSharkBro.com for more details. All right, so let's see what we get here. Uh, one to two is a crafter. Three to four is escape surf slave. Five, six is farmer. Seven, eight, herder. Nine to 12 is a merchant. 13, 14, outcast. 15, 16, petty nobility. That sounds good. I'd like to be a petty noble. Um, 17, 18 is the priesthood, and 19, 20 is warrior. So let's see what I get here. I got a one, so I'm a crafter. So there you go. With a craft, with the crafter cast, I get, um, I get subject and tradesman. So that's not terrible. And then I get a skill, which is crafting. And then I get a social standing, which is kind of cool. So let's see what that means. Subject means, where is it? So here we go. I am a tradesman. A tradesman, you have passed apprenticeship with a tradesman or within a guild while your talent may be a mediocre or worse, at least you have a fallback plan, which is always something my mom told me. I wanted to be a writer. She said, be a waiter. You can always fall back on being a waiter. So that was my fallback plan. Um, if you do not have sufficient gold to pay your upkeep, you may offer your services to a tradesman or to a guild to cover your upkeep. However, you may not take any other actions during that period. Okay, all right, so, and then being a subject, because I'm a subject and a tradesman, I am a subject in good standing with the Lord or the King, so that's always nice. While subject to their laws, the taxes you face are much less than the more expensive taxes others experience. I have to pay taxes in this game? Wow, that's hardcore. So that's what that means. Um, and then my story is on 22. And then you, the next thing you do is you go to story based on your character's cast, okay? It says, um, roll on from the story tables presented in this step. These suggested background elements and quick questions that players can answer or they can choose, okay? So then I get a craft story a crafter story so there you go so then you get your story here and based on what you rolled so you can get escape surf stories farmer stories um herder stories merchant stories outcast stories petty nobility stories priest stories i get my crafter stories okay so then based on my role that i do um i can get something for it so one to three is exalted mark uh, four to six is gifted mark. Seven to ten, the quiet hours of peace. That sounds lovely. The quiet hours of peace. Uh, pressed for war, too many closed mines, and a sundered mark. So each one of these events have a trait. So for 
exalted mark you're suspicious you're that's your trait um for gifted mark you're unworthy for the hours of quiet excuse me for the quiet hours of peace it's a secret past which is kind of cool um pressed for war is envious peers that sounds fun i hope i roll a 14 15 to 17 too many closed minds is a criminal past and 18 to 20 is a sundered mark so let's see what i roll here because i'm going to roll all this stuff because rick said roll always so i'm going to roll always this is very rough i appreciate whoever is watching this watching so let's see what i get here with this dice roll i got a 19 so i am a sundered mark which means I cast aside. A sundered mark means you have caused dire offense to the guild of your home town, and now your family's mark has been stricken from memory. Wow, that's pretty hard. Where it was once hung, the mark has been scraped, clean, filled in, and painted over. Very few examples of your craft remain. And folk will only buy your wares at a significant discount. So basically, I'm a black sheep. That's what I am, a sundered mark. I've been cast aside by my, yeah, it is it is me. I watch sundered mark. I'm a terrible, terrible person. How did I earn the ire of the guild? And who can you still count on? That's the question they ask me. Hmm. It's a good point, Rick. I could have been kind of cast aside by my, uh, by, my, by my guild and I have no other recourse and it's off to sea, much like many of the sailors that I know in real life. They've got nowhere else to go. They got nothing else to do. They burned all their bridges. There's nothing left. So they shove off. So, so far, as you can see, this is a pretty in-depth story mode. Uh, this is just character creation. Like, you're just making your character. So, so far, I have, let me make sure I'm writing all this stuff down. I am a crafter. I'm a crafter. I'm a tradesman. Of tradesmen. Subject. All right, so that is my cast I love making characters for games um, my cast talent was I told you it was a tradesman and subject which I'm I'm in good standing to the Lord or King but my guild because I'm a sundered mark they have nothing to do with me so my story is a sundered mark which means I've been cast off by my guild. So there you go. So I guess you can be cast off by your guild, but still a loyal citizen, right? So that's what I am. I'm a sundered mark. Man, I'm a real sad sack. All right, so then we skip ahead because we just did that part. Man, there's some good ones here, like the outcast stories, the priesthood stories, um, warrior stories, but now you get to your archetype. While the 10 archetypes presented here are only a sample of the many and uh, varied types of possibilities, there are uh, most res representative types in the characters encountered on the open roads in the dimlit tavern seeking adventure. You can pick your archetype or roll randomly to, to see what we have. Let's see, Rick said here, you earn the ire because you use a substandard material to cut costs on an important project that your guild was in charge of. And because of this, your family was sundered. Oh, man. The Lord or King was a childhood friend. That's a really good story, Rick. That's a really good backstory for this guy. You should play this dude. I feel like I'm making this character for you in a game we can play together. Again, I'm making a character here in Robert E. Howard's Conan Adventures of an Age Undreamed of. This is such a, it's such a beautiful book. I mean, the artwork is fantastic. It's written very well. Like I said, the character creation's a bit over the top. There's 89 pages of character creation, which I guess isn't too bad. But again, uh, it gets a little kind of uh, involved, which is cool. Um, but it really makes you put a lot of thought into your character or you're just your roles. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my archetype here and I can roll <clears throat> my archetype, which is, but again, I have to roll this Rick. So I might not even be a pirate. I don't even know what I'm going to be yet because the archetypes we have are one and two archer, three, four barbarian, five, six mercenary, seven, eight noble warrior, nine, 10 nomad, 
11, 12, pirate, 13, 14, priest, priestess, 15, 16, scholar, 17, 18, scoundrel, 19, 20, witch, shaman. So based on my role is what I'll be as of right now. I'm a crafter, I'm a tradesman, and I'm a subject of a crown. I'm a loyal citizen, but I've been sundered. I've been tossed aside because of some controversy. But now we'll get to see what kind of archetype I am. So let's see how that turns out. Ooh, big money. No whammies. A pirate would be nice because we already kind of have a little story here building that I was, I did some bad stuff in my guild, and then I just kind of went out to sea. I hid. It's like joining the circus. You know, kids used to join the circus back in the day when they did bad stuff. Now I could go out to see. What do I got? At 13, I'm a priest or a priestess. Okay. All right. So I'm a priest. Interesting. That's a good backstory because I was a bad person. I cut some corners. Maybe because of my my cutting corners as a member of a guild or, or, or a craftsman, some people were injured because of me. Maybe I built a faulty bridge or something like that. I was, I was a bad bricklayer and something happened. So because of that, in my, in my regret, in my haste, uh, because of this, I went off and joined the priesthood. Right? That works. Right? Right? So I'm a priest. And now they have, on the next page, they have your drawings of the different people. And like Rick said here, the artwork is just beautiful. I mean, look at this thing. This book is worth every penny of the price I paid for it. Um, it's a really great book. The dude at my game store, uh, Todd, who works over at Kitty, owner of Gateway Games, has said he's had a hard time keeping him on the shelves. And I'm actually rolling this character out so I can play on their game night they have, their Conan game night they be having. So I'm a priest and I'm a priestess. I've born into the faith or a late convert, which would be me. I'd be a late convert. You feel the calling of one of the many gods of the Hyporbian age. My pronunciation is bad for that. Hy Hyporbian age from the holy Amitra. A cursed set, Ishtar, Bora, it just names a bunch of other gods, or even those who are not overly worshipped like Krom, Ymir, or the Zamorian spider god. You are either associated with a particular temple, or you are uh, wandering the land and converting the unfaithful by any means you can, be it through example, with convincing speech, or by sword. So that could be kind of cool. So it might make me rethink some of my scores earlier because I already picked, because that's the one thing that I think is kind of off because I already rolled my, my traits here because that's like the second thing we did was your attributes. And the way I had my attributes laid out was I was more, um, I was acute and aware and wise and friendly. So I might have to switch that up a little bit. But yes, so with being a priest or a priestess, no, it doesn't say I roll for a god so I can choose one. I guess if I wanted to roll for a god, I probably could. Um, the the priests of, uh, of Mitra are always around the Conan world like you always see. I was reading a Conan story today at the Jump Zone with my kids where um, a, a, pr a priest of Mitra almost married um, uh, a rebel king to Conan's girl Mara, and he ended up killing him. Well, the, not the priest. But then, yeah, so with your career skill, I get a plus two uh, expertise skill and a plus two focus in the council skill. I get quiet wisdom, which is on page 62, so I can see what that's all about. Mandatory skills, plus one expertise, and plus one focus to insight, lore, persuade, and society. Uh, an elective skill. I can get an expertise and a focus to two of the following skills, alchemy, healing, or sorcery. Hmm, sorcery sounds fun. Sorcery is always fun in Conan. It's always fun in that world. I really enjoy the kind of, um, I guess, darker magic of Conan. Like it's more kind of primal. It feels more uh, dangerous, the magic in Conan, uh, as opposed to D&D, &D, which is very much like magic feels, I guess, so much a part of the world where in Conan it always feels kind of dirty, if that makes sense. 
And then you have your uh, equipment, your single melee weapon, often a staff, sword, or knife, a single copy of a scroll or book containing your faith's precepts and holy words, traveling clothes, oils, herbs, and religious accoutrements, which is a great word, accoutrements, a mule, and one kit for each elective skill chosen. So I'm a priest. Yes, sorcery is evil by Krom. So it's cool that you can maybe be an evil sorcerer. Um, but yeah, so then you've got your archetype. And then the next thing you do, so I'm a priest. So let me see that. And I've already kind of working on a backstory in my head. Like I said, something I did as a merchant, as a, not a, as a merchant, as a tradesman, um, went terribly awry. Like I said, like I, 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 I skimmed building a bridge or something. I was cutting costs and cutting corners and the bridge fell and people died. That's kind of good. Maybe a house I built poorly fell in on people and they, there was an earthquake or something and they died. So then I've kind of led my life to, to religion. So that's kind of where I am at this point. Um, now we have nature, which is while our types tell you what your character does Nature tells you how and why your character might choose to act a certain way. So that's cool. So they, they really give you a lot of options here, which is pretty sweet for this game. They really go overboard with the character creation. We haven't even gotten to like the war stories yet because all the characters in the game have a war story, which is pretty cool. So now I'm going to roll my nature, which is one to two, I'm cautious. Three to four, I'm curious. Five to six, inspirational. Seven, eight, learned. Nine, ten, practical. 11, 12, scheming, hmm, uh, 13, 14, sneaky, 15, 16, stoic, 17, 18, supportive, and 19, 20, wrathful. So these are all pretty good. I don't really know what I'm leaning for. I'm just going to let the dice kind of handle it. So let's see what happens here. And a one, and a two, and a five. I am inspirational. There you go. Dice don't lie, my friends. So I am an inspirational priest rick i can see why you would do this so much with your building character thing this is really fun to do uh rick works for well now he works for game trade media he's going out to do his own thing soon but he has a show called building character and it's it's a lot of fun like this is pretty neat um there you go. Cost cutting on a, on building the temple for the God you now worship to atone for your error. That's a good idea. And I'm inspirational. I N S P I R A D I O N A L. Yep. Charming, inspirational. That sounds like me. It's like real life. So now we're going to go to, um, and then I get an improved, um, and then with that, I get a plus one to a single attribute. I get a mandatory skill, a plus one skill expertise, and a plus one skill focus, which I haven't even really looked at yet. I'm just building the character. An elective skill, and then I get a talent. I get a new talent associated with my above skill. I must meet the prerequisite, though, so let's see what happens. With inspirational, the world is a difficult place, and you take it upon yourself to provide a good example to those around you. Maybe you learn this from a prior command, or it seems like the right thing to do. So I get a plus one to personality, which is pretty cool. Uh, my mandatory skill, I get a focus in counsel, observation, and persuade also cool and then effective skills elective skills are command healing and sorcery oh man i could be a, an evil sorcerer too <laughs> and I'm, i believe all these things stack and then, then i get one talent associated with the above skill so that's pretty cool um and then i get an education in step seven um they have some good ones here so this is building up nicely. This is pretty fun. Rick is watching, so that's cool. I'm basically just doing this for you, Rick. Um, so yeah, and don't forget Metal Shark Bro is live on Kickstarter right now. Uh, go to MetalSharkBro.com or go to Kickstarter and search Metal Shark Bro. We are at $9,807, uh, 242 backers with 22 days left. It's going pretty well. Uh, I'm really having fun making this character, so this is kind of cool. All right, so now with your education, you get the nature of education varies tremendously across the countries of the Hyperborean age. Literacy is rare, and most of what is learned comes 
uh, at the steep price of experience. Those who are lucky will enjoy what they are taught by their parents, or they will find a mentor or tutor to educate them, yada, 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 yada. So pick a role uh, in education from the table below. And with that, you get mandatory skills, elective skills, talents, and equipment. So based on your education, um, I can see where we are with this. So uh, the education table is one, two, against your parents' will, three, four, apprenticed abroad, five, six, educated on the battlefield, seven, eight, elder mentor, nine, 10, family footsteps, 11, 12, from a masterful tutors, uh, 13, 14, largely absent. I guess that means you're just kind of dumb. On your own terms is 15, 16, 17, 18 is traditional, and 19, 20 is under duress. So let's see what we get here. Roll it up, and that's a 10. So with a 10, I get family footsteps. Hmm. So with your family footsteps, you learned your career directly from one of your family members, whether a parent, grandparent, aunt, or uncle, brother, or sister. That, this meant that you received additional attention, but also meant that the lessons were longer and the standards were much higher. All right. So that is family footsteps. All right, and with that, I get uh, an expertise and a focus in discipline, resistance, and your character's career skill. And if we go back over here to priests, my character's career skill is counsel. So there you go. Um, we also get elective skills, expertise, plus one expertise, and a plus one focus to two, animal handling, society, and survival. Animal handling is always nice. A talent associated with the above skill and a fairly and a family heirloom that is little more than sentimental value. So there you go. And then we get to step eight because there's many more steps. Then you got your finishing touches, personal belongings, and all this other stuff. I guess I can do that later um or another time but we'll do we'll just do the first eight steps of this um step eight is your war story we're making characters here in robert e howard's conan adventures in an age undreamed of it's a really beautiful book um it's been super fun i've really enjoyed reading the book um it's pretty rad. Like the book is great. It's a D twenty. It's two D twenty, so it's not not super difficult. The Star Trek game that I played um, from uh, Modiphius is also a two D twenty game. So uh, you, if you know how to play a two D twenty game, it's not that difficult. You're just trying to roll under a certain number. Um, so that's that. And then now we have your step eight in your character creation is my war story. A level is my heirloom. You're a smart guy, Rick. Smart Alec. All right, so this is what we're doing. War is constant throughout the kingdoms. A battle of kings and chieftains, empires and armies. Everyone, including your character, has likely encountered war in one form or another or some sort of conflict that proved instrumental in their current fate. For some, it is their most fearsome encounter or adventure to date. So there you go. So, I mean, it is, it is the Conan the Barbarian world. It is, however, however you pronounce it, uh, high, poor, high, poor, be a, high, 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 Boria, Hyboria, there you go, Hyborian. It is a Hyborian world. There's going to be lots and lots of war. That's just the nature of the beast. Read any Conan novel. Everybody's always fighting somebody. So this is what happens, okay? So you get your war story. Um, uh, you get your one to two, you defeated a savage beast. Three, four, you are, uh, dispossessed, which is kind of cool. Um, and this just gives you skill improvements. Um, five, six, you gained and lost, which is important, a great treasure. Seven, eight, gained favor of a local noble. Nine, ten, prevented disaster. Eleven, twelve, shipwrecked. Thirteen, fourteen, survived a duel. 15, 16, survived a massacre, which sounds pretty awesome. Um, survived a stint at court and survived witchcraft or sorcery is 19, 20. So they all break down by twos. Um, so this is what we're doing here. 
So let's see, I'm going to roll this up because you always roll. If you're making a character like this, you always kind of roll because then you just see what happens. Let's see here. What do I got? I got a 14. So I, at 14, survived a duel. All right. So there you go. I survived a duel. That's pretty neat. So based on my character, I am a craftsman, a tradesman, and a subject of a crown, but I'm sundered. I did something terrible, which caused me to be ostracized from my guild. I became a priest, an inspirational priest, who was educated by his family, who survived a duel. If you can't come up with a background for that, then playing role-playing games might not be your thing, baby. You might want to go, I might want to go play Monopoly or something like that. But yes, so I survived a duel. All right. Survived a duel. So, so far, I don't even have a name for this guy yet, uh, for this person. But yes, um, Rick, you can suggest a name if you'd like. Ooh, I farted. But yeah, so I am a, a crafter, a tradesman. Uh, Sundered Mark, Priest, Inspirational, Family Footsteps, Education, and I Survived a Duel. Can't beat that with a stick. So that is the first eight steps of making a character in Conan the Barbarian. Uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. I'm going to come up with a name here in a little while for this dude. Um, I can always go to a name generator, Conan name generator. Let's see what we got. Oh, N-A-N name. Or a name generator is always nice to kind of have around for any role-playing game. Ooh, here's a Hyporbian name generator. All right, get male names, get female names. Uh, this name generator will give you five sets of two names. They're different from Robert E. Howard's universe. Um, their names are based on Chinese names, blah, blah, blah. They start to generate 10 random names. Um, how about... Uh, Now, so far, nothing great. This is a really good site normally. Um, Amok, A-M-O-K, Amok. That is my dude's name, A-M-O-K, Amok. So there you go. This dude has a name. His name is Amok. He is a priest, an inspirational priest who was educated by his family, who survived a duel. But he was a crafter in a past life, and um, a tradesman who was sundered. So there you go. That's how you make a character. That's the first eight steps. That's the first 40 pages of making a character in a Conan Adventures in an Age Undreamed of. So I hope you guys had fun watching that, Big Rick. I hope you had fun watching that. Um, pretty easy, pretty fun stuff. Maybe we'll go into some more of it another time. My name is Bob, and uh, thank you for watching.